Hi there, welcome or welcome back to Oops I Planted Again. My name is Courtney and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can bring your alocasia plant back to life. More specifically, I'm gonna be talking about how I brought mine back to life and now it has two leaves and should be a third one on the way fairly soon and I'm gonna talk about everything that I did to bring this plant back from what I thought was the dead. So let's dive in. I wanna give you a little bit of a background on why this plant even ended up uh, dying or so I thought was uh, dead. And basically what happened is I got this plant locally. Um, it had one leaf, it was in moss though. And it was kind of just chilling in moss for a long time. I kind of forgot about the plant because it was really small considering I have a huge collection. And I kind of just forgot about the plant being in moss. And if you've never worked with moss, moss can dry out very quickly. Not can dry out, it literally dries out very quickly if it's not in a moist environment, if you're not keeping track of it. Most of the plants that I now have in moss, I keep in a container with a lid on with a little glass of water to maintain that moisture. And I just spray it every couple of days so I don't really have to worry about keeping track of it every single day. But with this one, I left it amongst my other plants after its isolation session and it kind of just dried out and the leaf disappeared and it was just nothing. So I pulled out the moss and I saw that there was still a little bulb. So I kind of Googled like, what do you do with this? How do alocasias grow? All this stuff. And basically you can take that bulb and regrow alocasias. That's kind of how they grow. And I have um, colocasias outside and I have a couple of other alocasias, but this is the one specifically that I brought back from the dead. So the first thing I did when I realized that I still had a chance of bringing this plant, this alocasia, back to life was that I removed the bulb, I took off, I removed all of the moss, and I got it a brand new container. Now you don't have to do this. I didn't go out and buy a brand new container, but I got a clean and sterile, as much as, as sterile as I could get it, uh, container that I wanted this plant to specifically grow in and I also made sure that the container was really small. This is a one of the smaller containers that I had at the time, um, but if you could get even smaller than this, that is what I would do, especially if your little ball thing doesn't have any roots. Mine barely had any, so it wasn't a big deal um, at all, but the smaller the better so that your plant can focus on growing new foliage instead of having to focus on root growth and that can happen if you put a plant in a container that is too big. So the first thing I did was get a new clean fresh container and my method of regrowing was putting the bulb in soil. So there's other methods you can um, put them like in a moist paper towel and kind of wait it out for them to grow their roots and then stick it in soil. That's one method that I've seen. Um, but I just chose to stick it straight back in the soil and I use a fresh soil mix with this plant because like I said before, it was in moss and I was like, I'm just gonna put it in soil because for me it's easier to keep up with soil than moss, especially with how many plants I have out in the open. So I got it fresh soil as well. So I put that bulb in its new container with some fresh soil and I buried the bulb in the fresh soil. I watered it and I kept the soil moist. I generally keep the soil pretty moist for my alocasias. They seem to actually love it very much. And also the soil mix that I used was literally just regular garden soil. It wasn't any special soil mix. It was literally what I had on hand. And I don't even think there's any perlite in this container. There's like a little bit of perlite um, and just regular soil mix. But I kept the soil very moist. I really had to keep on top of it. And I wasn't necessarily watering it a lot more, but I was definitely spraying the top layer of soil and really just keeping track of the soil being moist but not completely sopping because you don't want the roots to be completely soggy because then you can get root rot. The next thing I did was isolate this plant. Now I have had trouble in the past with alocasias getting spider mites. For me they're really pest magnets but in general when I isolate them they tend to do fine so I do it as a preventative. I isolated this black velvet alocasia and I keep it isolated 
in clear little plastic bags. You can get them from the Dollar Tree and let me show you them really quick. So this is what the bags look like. They're literally the little party bags. You can get like a 20 pack, I think, from the Dollar Tree. And I keep the alocasia in here. Most of my alocasias are pretty small because they're growing from the bulb, so I keep them in here. If your plant is a little bit bigger, if you have like an older, bigger alocasia, um, I just like to keep it isolated because of a preventative. And it kind of helps create its own little greenhouse, which helps with keeping the plant humid in a humid condition. That is the next thing that I'm gonna talk about, humidity. Alocasias, in my experience, have loved having humidity. I do have a humidifier, but I think keeping it in the bag also helps, and I keep it in a container with the lid on, on and off every couple of days, um, but they love humidity, and I feel like that is one of the biggest things that help this plant, especially once I transferred it to soil, was making sure the humidity was Hi. The next thing is that you basically have to treat it like a regular plant even when you don't see anything happening. The bulb is literally working its magic under the soil and in my experience the best thing to do is just make sure you're keeping the water uh, watering consistently, um, keeping the soil moist, keeping that humidity up and just treating it like a regular house plant even though there's no foliage. And that leads me to my last point is to be patient with your plant and with yourself. It's okay if your plants die. It's okay if, you know, they don't work out the way you want them to. At the end of the day, they're plants. And it's fun to learn and to grow and to experiment and basically see what happens. And that's what I love the most, I think, about alocasias is that there's always a chance that they can bounce back and you can bring them back to life. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. You can throw it in the trash. <laughs> you can throw it in the trash. You can give it away. You can do whatever you want with your plant and don't let anybody tell you anything else. You can do whatever you want with your plants. You can take whatever advice you want. You can do whatever you want. I just want to share my experience of how I brought my black velvet alocasia back to life. I hope this video was super helpful. Let me know in the comments if it was. I love doing care videos of my experience because I feel like I've failed a lot of times with a lot of plants and I just like to share what has worked for me, what hasn't worked, just to see if you can try something new that may help you with your house plans. I wanna thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.